Here, move you come down this here. way a little bit more. There All you right. go. It's like we're, we're friends or something. We, this is our first time meeting, by the way, and I'm already in my sports bra, so that's that's what Brandon does. <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll take that's, off my shirt. That's not great. <laughs> don't, don't tell people that. They already heard it, so can't take that back. What's up, friends, and welcome back to the channel. So there are a lot of performance and recovery tools on the market right now, which is great because higher competition can typically mean lower prices. But what's not so great, though, is how on earth do you choose from an endless sea of really good looking options, all of which are kind of making the same exact claims? Well, lucky for you, I have a badass secret weapon and his name is Brandon Talbot. Now he makes insanely high quality, like Peter McKinnon-esque YouTube videos. He goes on these crazy adventures with his one wheel and he has an adorable dog named Henry. Now I realize that actually just sounded like a dating profile, but he's not available, ladies. Sorry, off the market. Anyway, Brandon has been someone that I have personally looked up to for quite some time in the space. And he's someone I really do trust on all things fitness and recovery since he has spent most of his 40 years of life working in that space. But we finally met up in person while I was visiting Utah. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of the highlights from our riveting discussion about the Compex and other e-stim tools out there, including what you actually need to know before just slapping these electrodes onto your body. We're gonna cover some of the biggest differences between EMS versus TENS. It can get very confusing. We throw NMES in there and all that jazz but we're gonna get through that and we'll explain who it's for, why you might wanna choose one over the other, and then from there we'll talk about competition and pricing. Side note, Slender Tone and Flex Belt, two EMS companies, just went uh, chapter 11, so that's kind of interesting and very timely. And then finally, we will wrap things up with a couple of tips that I hope can help you navigate through some of the marketing BS that I've seen surrounding EMS technology so that you guys don't have to waste your time or money on cheap gimmicks. Now, I get that is a lot to cover, so let's just dive straight into it. And we'll start with a very quick overview of what e-STEM tech really is and how it works. So in general, if you hear the term e-STEM or electrical stimulation, what we're really talking about is just sending some type of electric pulse, sometimes it's called a signal, using electrode pads via the skin to basically stimulate specific nerves or muscle groups in the body. We could go and talk about this all day, so for the purpose of this video, just think of e-STEM as the umbrella that covers everything we're about to deep dive into, including things like TENS and EMS. Now I'm gonna go off on a limb here and guess that many of you have heard of TENS. It's been around for a really long time. Maybe you've stumbled on it at your local pharmacy, but if not, TENS is basically just a type of e-stim therapy really designed for pain. And so the way it works is twofold. First, the electrical signals from the device are designed to interfere with the nerve impulses that are associated with pain. In other words, it's kind of trying to just block that pain impulse from traveling to the brain. Now, at the same time, it's also working because the signals are helping to release endorphins, and these are working on the receptors that help block your pain perception. So think of it kind of like the same way that morphine works, it just doesn't have all of the gnarly side effects to go with it. And from my experience, TENS can be really helpful for managing acute pain in the short term. Keyword, short term. It is not a panacea magic bullet that you try once and you're never gonna have pain again. It just doesn't work like that. But the mechanism of action here for which it works is by targeting the sensory nerves. Now, this is a little bit different from EMS therapy, which is targeting the motor nerves. And so this is typically used for things like muscle strength and recovery. So they're both very similar in that they are stimulating nerves using an electric current. 
but they differ when it comes to things like the type of nerves being targeted, your sensory versus your motor, the strength itself of the electric current, so EMS typically being a little bit stronger than TENS, and of course your expected outcome. So EMS, more so on the muscle strength and recovery stuff, pain relief kind of is what you use for TENS. Now, Brandon will fill in the gaps as we go along, but hopefully this gives you a little bit more context just around the different types of e-stim out there. It can get really, really confusing, so I just wanted to paint you a picture. So now we can actually move on to some of the more practical, fun stuff like this. Muscles pull on joints. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna make her arm flex up. If you use it on a leg, it's gonna like extend your leg if you're putting it on your extensors. Is it getting really warm in here or is it just me? It's probably I'm, just like, you. I'm literally starting to sweat right now. Like It's I, hot in here anyway. I know and I'm feeling it like a lot right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm it's, it's, just hit pause. Is it uncomfortable? Do you feel scared? No, I'm I'm not scared She's right being now. a drama queen. I, so I think it's good to go. It's mental. For context, what Brandon had me demo was one of Compax's strength training programs on my biceps. Now, I'm not gonna lie, definitely a weird sensation for sure, but what you'll see that's what's happening here is that the bicep muscles are starting to twitch or contract all on their own. I'm not lifting anything and you can see the flexing is happening even if I'm not thinking about it, which some could argue is a very lazy way to work out. But hey, I'm not here to judge. But practically speaking, I mean, when does this type of EMS training actually become useful? Where I think the special sauce in this is, is the muscle building. So mm -hmm. whether it's hypertrophy, like actually getting bigger muscles or developing the capacity and the strength of that muscle without increasing muscle size, that's where this thing's pretty incredible. If I wanna get bigger, I've got to stress the muscle enough with load, volume, you know, lack of rest. I need an increase in lactic acid. Yeah. I'm going to have to do all of that voluntarily. And that can suck. And there's, <laughs> that's hard on your joints. Yeah. Strength training, those things. It's not to say don't do it. Like there's very much a reason to strength train. But this thing basically takes over and goes, hey, do that. And we're going to simulate that without any of the joint load. Because again, like in order for me to lift my heaviest deadlift possible, I have to have enough weight on the bar that my brain goes, hey, this is like, we're got, we gotta fire all this muscle fiber. They call it the all or nothing principle, but the same amount of muscle fiber isn't gonna fire if I need to lift a pencil. The fiber that does is still 100% fired. Mm. It doesn't like, a smaller portion doesn't fire at a smaller percentage. It's always 100%, but you're just using less muscle fibers to do so. This thing can go, you are going to lift your max even if it is a pencil. Does yeah, that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So where this becomes really cool is that I can now work with loads that don't affect my joints as much and still do the type of training that would yeah. give me bigger muscles or bigger jumps in strength. Yeah, I mean, now that you're 40, you really gotta work on those yes, joints, you know? Yes, for sure. Yeah. So the key takeaway here, when it comes to muscle strength or efficiency, this can be a useful tool for maximizing power without overloading the tendons and the joints. Like your muscles activate at different frequencies. And the cool thing about Compex is that it can use a frequency that's so low that it doesn't really activate muscles, but it moves blood around. Mm. So if you've got inflammation from like a sprained ankle, this is super beneficial. Like it will drastically reduce your recovery time for something like a sprain. I've used it for hamstring tears, stuff like that, where you're like, I can't move that much, but I need to move because yeah. moving is what starts the, the, the recovery process. So I can fake moving <laughs> yeah by using this this basically acts as like a second brain god right? like your yeah. brain is yeah, the yeah, thing yeah, that's yeah. going like hey signal this overwrites that and goes <laughs> hey do what i say to do now i do really love that brandon calls this a second brain because well a it sounds super cool but also b it's kind of a unique way to think about this device from a functional perspective for instance if i have a lot of weakness or 
insensitivity in a specific area of my body, say my left calf, I can actually use this device like a second brain to get the muscles of that region firing without my actual brain having to send those signals. And so this has the potential to be super effective in situations where there is a disconnect between the muscles and the brain. Think atrophy, stroke, or even a handful of neuromuscular disorders like ALS. Obviously this is not medical advice. You definitely wanna clear it with your doctor first, but figured it would be worth throwing it out there as an option. So we've touched on a couple of the different ways that you can use EMS for things like strength and then recovery. So now let's talk about another eSTEM feature that you're gonna get with this device, the Compex, and that is TENS pain relief. Now, full warning, if you guys are in the market for a TENS unit only, there are much cheaper options out there. So I wouldn't buy the Compex just for this but it is a nice bonus feature and could help with acute pain so long as you set it up the right way. So when we do this, what we're trying to do is go upstream and downstream from the point of pain. Okay. Same so I'd say like muscle. right here is kind of where. Okay, so getting up into your neck is kind of like the no-fly zone. We don't oh, want to go too much onto your spine. Okay. You have a lot of very sensitive nerves there, and so it's just better if we don't. Okay. Get up there. All right, so, so then let's see the where placement. are you? Where is your pain? Right there. Right there. Like so right we kind of want to take it upstream without getting your hair in the way or your shirt here, your shirt tag. Okay. So we just want to encapsulate this area. Black is going to go up high. Negative is up high. Positive, oh. we're running distally. Oh, wait. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's backtrack for a second. Yeah. So Red and black, that actually makes a difference? Yeah. <gasps> yep. That explains so much, guys. Okay, so we got a negative and a positive. So we want the positive run distally. That just means away from your heart. Now I do realize that was a rather quick demo and we only covered one area of the body. But the key takeaway here is pay attention to your pad placement and wire setup. I mean, not only for safety reasons, but also because it's just gonna make your sessions infinitely more effective. And so if you guys don't have a compact aficionado like Brandon in your life to literally strap the electrodes onto your back, well, that's terribly unfortunate, but there are a ton of Compex resources out there, including an app and visual guides on the device. I'll include everything in the show notes below, but basically you'll have plenty of guidance from the company when it comes to setup. Just go slow to start, avoid the spine. And as my mom always says, just don't do anything stupid. Also a pro tip from Brandon, keep your pads in the fridge to make them last longer. And also you can totally go with a cheaper brand if you need some replacements. You can find them on Amazon way cheaper. Just make sure they're still compatible with the Compex. So turning now to price and for the most part, I do think the Compex devices are pretty reasonable. I mean, this one, the Sport Elite 3 with 10s, it's $300, but it does come with 10 different programs. However, there are a lot of cheaper ones out there. They have options as low as 150. So really it's gonna depend on your needs, but you don't have to spend a fortune on a quality EMS device. Just do your research and make sure it's a reputable company and not some $20 knockoff on Amazon. On the flip side of that, I've also seen some very pricey devices, all sorts of these new flashy EMS suits and full body devices that cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And who am I to judge? Maybe this is where the future of fitness tech is going and in like 10 years time, we'll all be walking around wearing these Marvel-esque suits out and about. I doubt it, but who knows? But for now, what I can say is that I think a little bit more research is needed on these kind of devices to justify their price and to kind of back up some of these very overhyped claims that I'm seeing about EMS. Have you heard about Bionic Gym? Which no. is this, I think it's the same thing. I saw a stupid Instagram ad for it. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah. I was, I laughed because the Instagram ad was 
like somebody's butt shaking and I was like, what yeah, is this? Yeah, it's probably like the same thing. But I think it's it's the pants, so. Um, let's let's see. see. No offense, like the, the technology that they're using is working, but what they're selling you on is incorrect. Mm. What's the difference between Bionic Gym and other EMS? EMS stands for electrical muscle stimulation. Which this is. Yeah. NMES, neuromuscular electrical stimulation. Oh, this is neuro. It's the same thing. Why do we NMES have a and EMS are the same thing. Guys, this is so confusing. Yeah. The major difference is that Bionic Gym revs up your calorie burn and can raise your heart rate once you adapt to it. It does that by using the shivering hack. So they're just saying like muscles vibrating is gonna cause your m muscles to burn more calories and that's true, but that's exactly what that does too. I was sweating as you could see. Yeah, this is ago. a workout. Like when you yeah. get done, you will be tired. Where you're going to be really tired is neuromuscularly. So not just like your muscles, but your brain, you're gonna feel like, did I just have one of those really emotional talks with a best friend? You're gonna be kind of wiped. And so a couple of tips to just think about before investing money into an e-stim device. So the first thing is look for a reputable brand that also has a good warranty. So for instance, Compex, they've got a 30 day money back guarantee, no questions. Bionic Gym, however, has a restocking fee if you use the device. Hmm. Number two is can you find peer reviewed studies on the device and are their product claims actually backed by quality research? And then finally, I'd say, just think about what you're actually looking to get from the device. And will the company or does the company provide ample resources on this? Again, I went with the Compex because they've been in the space for like three decades. Their pricing seemed really reasonable. It looked like a high quality device. And well, of course, I trust Brandon's opinion, but there are a lot of great options out there. So keep me posted on what you guys try, how those things are working for you, all that jazz. Also, side note, if anyone has one of those catalyst suits, you know, the like $2,500 ones, please let me know, like, how does it work? Does it actually work? I'm very curious about that one. I've not been able to get my hands on it, but then again, I'm not Ben Greenfield, so <laughs> not surprised. Anyway, drop a comment in the section below, the comment section below that is, and I will be sure to follow up with you guys on how I'm doing with this EMS training. I'm really just getting started, so this is like review part one-ish. So I'm gonna follow up in a couple months time and let you know if I'm actually seeing any results. Otherwise, I'm coming after you, Brandon. I know where you live now. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much. Also, shout out, Brandon, if you don't already subscribe to his channel, oh my God, just go and dedicate your afternoon to binging like the last 10 of his videos. It is totally worth it. I love you guys. Cannot wait to see you soon. And until we meet again, I cannot wait to catch you on the next one. I wonder if that's getting old. I think it's too much my signature now. I Whatever. <laughs>